President, you see guys, you're all too important to miss for this week. That's why we made it sure that we can join you in this revival series. Amen? Amen. And uh, whenever working students come together, angels come with them too. And I'm sure you must have felt the hands of God leading you to this place. Um, I've been thinking before I stood up whether it will be most beneficial and comfortable to speak in Tagalog. Um, and I was looking around if uh, we have attendees tonight who cannot understand Tagalog. Pakiwari ko ay We have one We have one We do have one Okay Okay So For the sake of our good friend We will Talk tonight in English huh? And of course that will be carried All throughout this revival series Don't fail to come each night Because I will keep it at English because you are here tonight and for the rest of this week and I believe the Word of God is for all of us. The Word of God is for each to understand. Okay, why don't we try to make ourselves comfortable? Um, we're all tired. I'm sure not a single day in the life of a working student is not spent well and tired. That's the reason why um, some of us have to rush in, coming a little bit late, so that we can spend time together in worship. But I'd like to let you know that this revival series is solely for you. So don't ever fail to come each night. Even if you have to come late, it's better than not at all. Okay? So don't worry. You just come, find your seat. Uh, for the last whole week, this past week, every corner of this Finster Hall has been filled up to the breezeway, right there at the, at the breezeway of the administration building. The College of Nursing just put down their tarp, you know, which we have replaced with ours just this morning. And the Lord has been very good. We finished our revival series. This has been full packed, of course, with the presence of our brethren from Makiling View uh, Chapel. And uh, yesterday, the Lord has been very good to send three souls who went down the watery grave in baptism. And we praise the Lord for that one. Well, if you are contemplating on taking the hand of God, for your future. I invite you to start thinking tonight. Because when Jesus knocks at the door of your heart, just as you are special to Him, He will certainly invite you to join Him in a walk for eternity. Amen? Amen. So, Keep inviting your friends to join us in this revival series. I'm not disheartened, neither am I sad, because I wanted you to hear the message of God, most especially uh, to the circumstances that God can reveal Himself to working students like you. Why don't we just bow our heads and have prayer before we open the Scriptures. Loving God in heaven, you have placed in the palm of your hands your children who have blessed in this life, who don't have much in this life, who may have their hands most of the time in work. But because you are the same God who has created each one of us, we firmly believe that the holes in your hands are just as the same for each one of us. The blood, the sacrifice of the cross,
are for all of us. We invite you now to be present in our needs, in our study, so that as, as we open the words, the truth of your scriptures, you will also open our hearts so that you may dwell and inspire us as we wait for you. We bless, dear Lord, your name this evening. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name, amen. I have decided to make immediate changes to the chosen theme for this revival series. I have been praying each night while I was doing the revival series for the College of Nursing, asking God that He would give us exactly the right material from this Bible for which we would all be inspired to walk with Him. All throughout this past week, I have been asking God to tell me exactly what messages should be studied together. It wasn't clear until Thursday, Friday came, Vesper came, I was just not so sure about what we should be talking about after the baptism. I don't know for what reason the Lord inspired me to come up with something. You know, I strongly believe that Jesus held it until the time I could finish the entire revival series for the College of Mercy, His touch, before He would give me the door for the working students. I'm sure that this same revival series will be as powerful as what we had last week. Amen? Amen. Because I believe that you are all too important to miss in the mind of God. In fact, I have a heavy heart to speak with you tonight, not because you are not wanted, but because I am very careful that with each spoken word, it will cut deep and strong in your hearts, so that we live each night never the same as the Lord would bless us each evening. Now, before we go through for our study tonight, I'd like to remind you, never come each evening in this revival series without bringing three things. Okay? Three things you should bring each night when we come to the revival series. When you say revival, you're supposed to be revived, strengthened, edified. No? The zeal should be rekindled. You should have the passion once more to serve God just as it was when you were first baptized. And that can only happen according to the Bible when there is the opening and the reading and the internalizing of the Word of God. Remember, the Word of God is so powerful. It can cut through the soul. It can transform. It can change the heart of someone for which education cannot even change at all. You see, you can have your PhD, and yet, your attitude towards life and to God may not be as mature. And so, we want you to bring your Bibles each night. We want to draw the strength, the power, the transforming grace of God from this Bible. I don't believe there wouldn't be any revival except that we open the Word of God eat of it and place it in our hearts and ask God to have compassion to transform us. So what's the number one? Bring your Bible. Can I see your Bibles raised tonight? How many of you brought their Bibles? Wonderful. Many of you brought their Bibles. Those of you who weren't able to bring them, probably you were so much in a hurry to come here tonight and you just left that Bible by the seat where you just sat before leaving your place. Bring your Bible. Okay? 
Don't forget to bring your Bible. Whatever version, just bring it. We'll study it together. Number two, don't come to this place without praying before coming. Wherever you will be coming from to this place, make sure that you pray in that place before coming. I'm sure the Lord will inspire you from that distance coming to this place because each night He has a message for you. No matter how much you are tired, no matter how much you may be so busy, just simply pray before coming to this place so you don't pray here while sleeping. Did you get me? Come here, pray first before you come. Third, you come here with your pens and with your notebooks. I'm sure that in this group of young people who are working students will be the next leaders of the Adventist Church. You believe that? And so, I want you not to miss a single idea or a gem of truth by attending revival series like this. For all you know, you may use it in the time God would appoint for the need. So please do come with your pen and with your paper. How many of you did that tonight? Huh? Can I see your hands? Oh, there are only a few of you. So, we give the chance for the rest. Bring your pens, bring your papers when we come to study tomorrow. I'm sure the revival series will just be as wonderful with the College of Nursing and for this group. Okay, why don't we begin? Let me put up on screen something that we should think about for tonight. I'm talking to a group of working students. I'm talking to a group who does hard work in this university. In fact, you are the scholars of the university. You know that? Just in case you don't know it, just in case that you think there is more favor towards those who are paying their tuition without working, you're dead wrong. Because the truth is, you are much favored. This is a fallacy that many of you may not have accepted and understood. But in a university, most especially in an Adventist university, the working students are the most favored. If I may prove my point, you have an opportunity to come to a UB, finish a degree, a baccalaureate degree, and even a post-baccalaureate degree without a single centavo. Am I right? Without the work education program in, Met in Metro Manila, 
I'm pretty sure you will be spending the next three years of your life and you wouldn't get a degree. But because we believe that in Adventist education, the foremost distinct feature is the work education program, we have always accommodated working students each year. Why? Because the Adventist Church believes in the integrity of labor. We have always believed that studies and labor should come together. Working students today, no matter how many complaints you have, are you listening? No matter how many complaints you have, are far better today than in our time 20 years ago and probably 30 years ago during the time of Sir Spana. We can never purchase and get items from the college store. No matter how hard work we do, we can do that one. So, no matter how 
how, how strenuous the work would be because you need to pay, you need more hours, you would demand for more hours, right? But there's a policy. You just can't get the hours that you wanted. Am I right? And then you become a little bit dissatisfied. Hmm. You're smiling. Because it's the predicament, right? I wish you would invite your supervisors. Because this revival series is also for them. I wish supervisors are working students too. Or they may have been working students. So they would understand our predicament. Number two, pay and benefits. Well, the benchmark for this one will be your policy, of course, the working policy, right? That should be the benchmark. Are you getting the listed benefits? The stipulated pay? What department in this university is the highest rated pay for a working student? You know that? Huh? Anyone? Huh? Student guards? Farm? Maintenance? You have all your answers coming from your own department. Don't miss tonight, tomorrow evening, because I'm going to tell you which of the departments in AUB is the highest rated with pay for our working students. So are you satisfied with the pay as stipulated? Number three says they're co-workers. Hmm. Ding, ding, ding. Does it ring a bell? Huh? Are you satisfied with your co-workers? I mean, the attitude, the relationship, you know? Do you find support with your work co-workers? Or you are burdened because they don't do the job? No? Uh, or sometimes there is this competition. Huh? And sometimes they are also sick sick. Am I right? There are some who would like to have the favor of the supervisor by doing something good for the supervisor to what? To outrun the other. Huh? Then we also have the location. Where's your location? In your workplace. Do you find it satisfying? Of course, when you are with the when you are with the grounds, you don't expect to be in the air-conditioned office. That's totally absurd. When you are assigned at the grounds, don't covet the place of Roy in this place. Are you following me, friends? Ray, come on. Put the check. Don't have two answers for each item. We'll have problems. Then management competence. How is the supervisor managing the work in your workplace? Is the supervisor competent? Or you seem to desire to replace him or her? <laughs> huh? Because you think the supervisor is not competent. You know what competent is? Of course, you're working students. The most brilliant students in AUP are the working students. I want the college of nursing to be a doctor. Next, relationship with supervisors. You know, you don't, you know, the supervisor is very kind to you. you know? <laughs> uh, punch out will be five o'clock, but you know, you come to your supervisor and tell her, Mom, I have this research with Pastor Orwell, the teacher who gives a lot of assignments. Can I just spend one hour for it? Can you release me at four? And your supervisor says, Of oh, course. <laughs> or your supervisor will say, finish your job. After that, you can go. Let's see what you would answer there. The use of skills. Are your skills appreciated? Can you exercise the skills that you have relevant to the work that you have? Huh? Or you're not allowed to use your skills because your supervisor wanted the traditional way, the conventional way. 
When you do it differently, he tells you, she tells you, that's wrong. Do it this way. Huh? Use some skills. The sense of accomplishment. Does your supervisor reward you in appreciating the things that you do? Huh? Are the accomplishments measured on your bulletin board? Probably in your workplace. Oh, you're smiling, huh? Then advancement opportunities. Does your supervisor allow you to advance in what you do? Probably he sees you best on this one. Why don't you take a few more lessons so that you can even become better with the work that you do? Huh? Or they, do they bring you to more responsibilities that would allow you to be better with the work that you do? Huh? Advancement opportunities. Then recognition and respect. Do your supervisors respect you? Do your co-workers respect you in your workplace? Or you call each other? Never mind. <laughs> huh? Is there an atmosphere of respect in your workplace? I think that is very important. Satisfied? Or dissatisfied? Then you have the interest level of work. Huh? That means you have so much interest of the work that you do. Huh? Or you are a misfit or misplaced. No? You love to do cooking. You have always wanted to be in the cafeteria. No? But because cafeteria workers are all filled in already, the need for the workers are all filled in, you ended up in the security department. No level of interest. No. Then you also have the, the stress level. Huh? Is your workplace toxic? Huh? The stress level is so high. The stress level is so high. But the, thing, uh, the moment the supervisor would walk in your workplace, your stress level is going high. You know? The mere shadow of your supervisor raises the stress level. Huh? Does that happen with you? Check that out. What about the challenge? Have you been bored with the work that you do? So that after two years, you're no longer challenged with the work that you do. Check that out. Is it uh, positive, positive, negative, or negative, positive, or just simply negative? Then the skill development. Are your skills being developed in the work that you do? Then skill working conditions. Are the working conditions safe? Is it, uh, is it amiable? Do you find it a place where it exudes no? the passion to do the work? Like, uh, is your workplace clean and neat? Or you have a problem with that one? You are working uh, in the maintenance probably, and danger is there. You don't even have the, the safety helmet. Huh? Oh. You're working on welding, but you don't have the, the screen. Huh? Oh, you're working with garbage, correct? That's right. And you don't even have a what? A mask. Wow. Responsibility. Is the responsibility handed to you? Makes you accountable. Or you are made accountable by a responsibility that has not been given to you? That should be a question. The last in our list is job security. Huh? Have you ever thought of where would you be for next semester? Haroy? You're accommodated here with the PR for one semester? Then you left for voice of youth without, you know, Asking permission. <laughs> By the time you return from the voice of you, you're half off from your work. <laughs> huh? Does that happen to you? Do you find it satisfying? Now, at the end of that, I'd like you to check 
which column has the most number, okay? Then you will find out if you have the most number in the negative, then you are most dissatisfied. And I will tell you, friend, in our work, there's no way you will be satisfied. Are you, are you getting me? Even all the conditions, even all the circumstances will be favorable to you. You will never be satisfied. There are no circumstances in this world that will make a person satisfied. Are your circumstances better than Solomon? None in the Bible have been recorded to be satisfied with what they have. They would always know, they would always create a vacuum in their lives. Solomon puts this in few words. It's like a chasing of the what? Of the wind. Can you chase the wind? Would you be able to grasp the wind in your hands? Who can do that one? None among us. Solomon who had the best in his life said it's like a chasing of the wind. There will never be satisfaction no matter what. Your heart would crave again for another as soon as you get Next time around, you want to write a supervisor that is more kind to you. Administration changed, you were praying so dearly, the supervisor was changed more favorable to you. Jackpot! Good for you. But as soon as you have been working with the supervisor that you wanted, things change. And here you come with another vacuum for satisfaction. Never was it recorded in the Bible that man has ever been satisfied. So don't ever think that as you work in AUP, that with your complaints that will be answered, you will be satisfied. No. You wanted a raise in your pay today, this semester, the following semester, even if it would be granted, there will be another vacuum for satisfaction. It will never be filled to your satisfaction. And so, it isn't a solution to be satisfied at all. You see, friends, no matter how God will answer our prayers, there will always be that craving because God can only satisfy your soul. Amen? There's no way you could be satisfied with the material things of this world. Change your supervisor, change the policy, change the administrator, change the pay, change the workplace. That's why I have always believed as an administrator in my experience that one who cannot come up with things in one place would just be as the same if you transfer to another place. If he is a gossiper and a problem in this place, he will eventually become a gossiper if you transfer him to another place. Men will never be satisfied. While we live in the nature of sin, this heart will always look for something because God has so made us that only Jesus can satisfy your soul. No matter how many buhay buhay you would receive for December, no matter how many sacks of rice you would receive for December, you will never be satisfied. So don't ever believe that there will be satisfaction with what this world can offer because only Jesus can satisfy your soul. But friends, the biggest problem that we have 
other than this job satisfaction is the trials that we go through. Because the moment you become dissatisfied, it will always come with trials in life. Who among you didn't have to go through trials? Can you tell me? All of us, from the president of the university to the least among our students, all have to go through trials. But the trials I am talking about are those who have accepted Christ and have to walk through the trials. Those who haven't accepted Christ but have to go through hardship are in those that are mentioned in the Bible as trials wrought by God. It is only when you accept Christ as your Savior that you are called to trials. You know that? No one who is called by God who will not walk through trials. In fact, the moment you receive God, you are called to trials. Simply say, Jesus, enunciated, follow me, take up your bed. Is that what the Bible says, Conrad? No. The Bible says, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself, you have to take up your own cross. The call to faithful Christianity is a call to trials. Because by trials, we are fortified, we are made pure and mature. Probably we have the most in this university. Am I right? We have the most trials probably in this university as working students. Trials from your parents, trials from your roommates, co-workers, trials from supervisors, huh? trials from wrong boyfriend or girlfriend. This will work out the best in us as God has designed. Come on, everybody, look at those picture frames up there. How many Filipino presidents do we have there? No, come on, don't count them. What I am trying to say. That most of those Filipino presidents of this university have gone through, if not finished, their studies as working students. Huh? Who? Armando Fabella? Alfonso Ronda? Robin Saban? Barayuga and Nesem? The work of trials, the work of God completed in someone's life works out what? Patience, long sufferings, and better aptitude and outlook in life. Friends, as long as you are a working student in this university, dream big because God is working out patience in you because someday you will take the hand of leadership. I was talking a few months ago with Joe Biabu. Joe Biabu, our youth director for the division, is once a working student in what department is? Security department. You see, most of these people whom God has called to greater hands of leadership are those who have learned to be faithful in small things in the world that they know. This and all of this have been wrought by the trials that come their way. You see, friends, in crisis, in trials, God allows us to know more about Him. 
He reveals more of Himself to us when we go through the trials. Be thankful when you go through trials. That's what the Bible says. Be thankful for the crucibles that come your life. It sanctifies you. It separates you for a greater purpose someday. Oh yes, I would start naming leaders in our institution and outside the institution who have become working students and today they can only look back and thank God. But the big problem is when the trials come so powerful that it can pull us away from God. Has that, has that happened to you? When trials can pull you away so far from God that sometimes you become so disheartened. Stop studies. Trials are our friends. Amen? Amen. Trials are our friends. Mark that tonight. Trials are our allies to success. Each trial that God allows you to go through, He equivalently provides the strength to overcome. Look what the Bible says. Come on, open it. If you don't have your Bible, write it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. Let me do this quick. We don't want to be spending all the night for this one. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Let me read that, Roy. Whatever version you're holding tonight, whatever Bible is that, let me read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation, no trial, no affliction, no problem has overtaken you except such as is what? common to man. God sends the sun to rise for both the righteous and the what? The wicked. God sends the rain and the drought both to the wicked and the what? The righteous. Trials are common to all men. Wait a minute, Joe Orbe. What about your father dying this month? The next month, your sister. The next month, your brother. The next month, your mother. Whatever trial you are going through, always remember, they are our allies. Nothing stops with trials. All have to pass through trials, and yet it will end up right there with God. No trial will ever happen to man that God wouldn't allow because God has a special purpose for the trial in your life. It is common to an old man. It's not only for David. It's not only for Conrad. It's not only for Roy. It's common to all of us. Whether it is temptation or trial, it is common to all men. And here, the text continues but God is faithful. Who will not allow, but who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with that temptation will also make the way of what? Come on, tell me. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can, but he will provide a what? A door, a way of escape. For you to overcome. Trials are our allies. God may have allowed them because He wants you to be purified. Whatever trial you are going through right now, I want you to remember that it won't be long. If you wait patiently, God will provide the door, the way of His name. And lastly, it says there, God provides that door, God provides that way, so that you may be able to bear it. Amen? Amen. You will be able to bear it. Even if you are summa total, 10 years, God will make it sure, with your patience, He will reward you with a tassel, tick 
over the other side. God will certainly complete what He has started in you. That's what my Bible promised me. He will make a door of escape. He will make a way of escape. Certainly, as God has promised, you will complete what you have started. Don't just stop. Whenever Satan must have tempted you to stop. You see, friends, the door of escape, the way of escape, is Jesus himself. No other way of escape. No other door of escape except Jesus himself. Come on, jump to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9 tells us, I am the what? Huh? Where are you reading? I am the door. Jesus referring to the true shepherd, he said, I am the door. Then he continues, he who enters by me, the door, he will be what? He will be spared. He will be saved. He will be saved. And I will go in. Or anyone who goes in and out of me will find what? Pasture. Other version says, will find abundance. Oh friends, for every trial that we will go through, God will make it sure. It will not stretch you beyond your capacity. God will always come with a way of escape. God will always come with a door towards his feet. And that door, the Bible says, is no other than who? Jesus Christ. I'm glad that Jesus I serve is also the door to prosperity abundance and faithfulness. Throughout this week, my friends, we are going to study men and women who have lived in the time of the Bible, who went through the trials, who went through the hardships in life, but God provided an escape for them, and they were victorious. Let's study about Bible characters what led them through trials? How did the Lord provide them success? How did the Lord support them to overcome? Because there are many of them in this Bible. If God has blessed His people, He will certainly help me overcome trials. He will certainly allow me to know Him even more in the times of crisis in my life. What are the crises of your life today, friends? What are the troubles that make you worry even today? Is it your tuition? Is it the work that you do? Is it your sick mother? Is it the food you shall eat? There's nothing that God cannot provide. God provides everything even before we could ask Him. We only simply have to trust Him. You see, friends, after all, after all, the satisfaction in life as working students is not counted in the pay that we receive, neither in the hours that we get, but by simply putting our trust in the door. By simply finding the door by simply taking Jesus by His word and promises. I invite you for this week to study with me. I invite you to bring your Bibles each night. I invite you to pray before coming here and learn how the Lord has been very, very faithful to all of us as working students. Don't come here with your complaints, believe me. Even if we have to place here Noe Noe Aquino as the next president of the university, it wouldn't solve our problems. 
whoever would see as president of the university or as student services vice president. Whoever will be the director for the work education, it will never in any way solve the vacuums in our heart. The only way to see it is to put your faith in Jesus. Amen? Amen. How many of you would like to start your journey to the Lord? How many of you would like to enter the door this morning, this evening? How many of you would like to open that door and enter in in a journey of faithfulness with Jesus? Friends, I want you to keep praying. Because with this, I am inspired that none of you will fail if you will only allow Jesus to come into your heart. Enter the door. Enter Jesus Christ. And He will certainly lead you in the way of abundance and faithfulness. As we bow our heads tonight and pray, I want you to search deep in your hearts. We want to listen to this music. I want you to hear it. And as you hear this music, I want you to contemplate where you are standing right now. As we listen to this melody, I want you to think of what are the problems, what are the anxieties of your life. Is there anything too hard for Jesus to reach out for you? Is there anything too difficult for Jesus to solve for your problems? Keep praying, my friend. Keep talking to the door of our faith. Jesus will never abandon you. He will open a door, a way of escape, so that you may remain in faithfulness. I want you to start praying tonight. Speak to them 
in their dreams and moments of silence before they sleep tonight. Whatever problems do they have, burdens, worries, anxieties, even doubts, or probably looming death in the family. Father, stretch your hand. Take them, dear Lord, by their feet. And let them walk with you through the door. Because you, Jesus, is our only hope. Bless us to come each night, dear Father. Renew our commitment to be faithful to you. Revive us anew once more. That the rest of the working students whom you have blessed in this university will not only work for themselves, but they will shine as beacons of truth, exemplifying life of excellence. Because you live in them. You have made them go through the door. Father, tonight, let it be the start of you walking with us, living our lives. Thank you for the promise that you will never forsake us, that you will provide a way of escape for all of us. You will give us access to that door, our Lord and Savior. And in His name we pray. Amen.